All right, everybody, this is Eternal Blade here with a new 3DS Max modifier tutorial. Today, we'll be, we will be covering the bend modifier. So, I've created a simple box here 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 100 centimeters and 10 segments on all sides. And let's go ahead and apply the bend modifier to it. So, initially, when you apply it, nothing happens. But if we begin to move the angle here, you'll be able to see that our object actually bends. Now, if we go to our for view here, you can see that the angle directly relates to how much our object bends. So if we bend 180, you're going to get a perfect sort of half circle. 90 will give you a perfect 90 degree angle, so a 90 between one side and the other, and so on and so forth. 360 will give you a perfect circle. Now what the direction does is it allows you to affect the turn of the bend. So if you rotate that, you'll see that 90 degrees basically rotates it exactly a quarter turn. And anywhere in between, you're going to see that the top is like is halfway. So the bottom is one side, the bottom is oriented like this, and the top is sort of oriented in the middle. It just allows you for some pretty unique results. Now, the bend axis, let's just move these in 90 degrees so you can see. So we're on the Z right now, so you can see it's following the Z axis. So if we put it to the Y, you're going to actually be on the Y axis bending. So you'll be able to bend in different directions depending on your axis. And the X will allow you to sort of bend outward along the X axis. All right, now what the limit effect does, let's just change this to Z, is it allows you to not bend or limit the bend on per portions of your object. So if we raise this to say 50 centimeters, which is going to be half of the diameter of our object, actually I believe it's the, and then hit limit effects, you'll see that the upper half of our object no longer bends. It just moves itself with the bottom portion. And this can be used in combination with any of the directions. And you'll see that top portion doesn't have any bend effect whatsoever. So if we just zero these out for a little bit, and we do the lower limit, and you can actually see the limit here with this orange line going across. Now the lower limit will allow you to do the same thing. However, you'll see right now that it actually goes below our mesh. So if we move this, it won't affect anything. And the reason that is is because there's no mesh there. So what you have to do is go here to the bend modifier, the gizmo, and just go ahead and rotate it, or sorry, move it up a little bit. Let's put this at 25 and minus 25. So what we have is the bend modifier affecting the top quarter, the bottom quarter, but not any of the middle. So if we move this, you'll be able to see how, um, sorry, reverse that, it's affecting the middle, but not the top or the bottom. So you can see how it moves, but it doesn't affect the mesh on these areas. And you can change that to where you know it affects more and or less um, depending on your desired result. So some of you have been asking, well, what, what can you use this for? Let me go ahead here and just um, give this box some different parameters here. So let me actually remove all of these bend effects here. Go to our box, let's increase the height, something like this. Okay, now a lot of, uh, a common element in an architectural you know, scene or something like that um, is gonna be an arch. So arches are actually you know, relatively difficult to make sometimes. But with this bend feature, you can simply give it an angle of say 180 degrees and you'll immediately have a perfect arch. You actually have to move this gizmo uh, back down there um, just so it sits perfect there. All right, and that'll immediately give you a perfect arch regardless of whatever geometry you have. So you can use this in conjunction with say a lathe modifier or something else and get really cool results really quickly. And you know you can even bend this if you want to have say an element in you know a garden or something or a, a weird shape you know halfway in between which is really really cool. And again if you want to you know make some other cool effects you can always just affect the limit here and just you know make some sort of you know candy cane shape really quickly or if you want to make, you know, whatever other shapes, um, you're allowed to do it. Now another cool little feature here of this is the center. 
So let's click on the center here and we can move it and you'll see that the rotation changes based on that point. So if we have a rotation of 90 here and we change the center, you can actually rotate the object around different portions. So you can use this for animation purposes or if you're trying to um, you know, animate something coming together, you know, swooping down or even you know, just an element in your scene that you want to position accordingly. Now this is just a pretty easy way of doing it by just changing you know, what point this object is bending along. So uh, with that said, that'll pretty much sum up what the bend modifier can do. I hope you guys have learned something. Um, so feel free to check out my Facebook channel, facebook.com slash eternalblade, as well as my Gumroad and my Google Plus account. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and happy modeling.